Hello wonderful humans, in this video I'm going to be walking you through my new augmented second brain template. We're going to go through the key features of the new template, how you can start to integrate it with your old second brain system if you were using my old template, and also just show you how you can go from this to this. Let's get into it. So the first thing that you'll notice is that this is no longer just a list of databases that you need to put into pages and then move across. I've already put the major databases into a page of their own so that you can just click and drag them over to the sidebar like this. You don't need to drag across the welcome guide, but that's a great place to start. Inside here, there's all the kind of information about Paro, what Paro is, how to tidy up your sidebar. Once you're done reading through that page, you can move it to the archive. If you're using my old second brain template, the quickest way for you to integrate your old system to this system is to move the projects page that was in your sidebar into the new projects page in your sidebar, and then turn that into the text. So it reveals all the contents inside that new page like this. So you'll wanna click my projects, drag that to projects, click inside projects. And then once you're inside, hit right click, turn into text. And that will unpack all of the projects that were in that previous page. This way you can start to integrate these databases and rip any sort of schema that was on this previous view into this one. Or you can start to do things like clicking and dragging into this new database. You can imagine doing the same thing with each part of Para. So go through your resources, your areas and your archive and start to integrate the databases like that. Now let's get into the new features of the database. The first major change comes to thinking about your notes as they relate to time. In the previous template, the old paradigm was figure out which database that this note went into. Was it a project, an area or a resource or just a note? Or did it live in the knowledge hub? And then connect that note to the relevant project or to the relevant area. While that works, it's not the fastest way to think about increasing the relevance or the effectiveness of the note to be used in the project. By thinking about our notes in time, we actually start to increase the relevance and the usefulness of our notes. That's why the new template has databases for planning your work and your energy across the yearly, the quarterly, weekly, and daily time horizons. At a glance, you can see what your yearly goals are. And if your quarterly plans are going to be meeting those yearly goals, by taking time to set your quarterly goals and reflecting on them each quarter, you can iterate and improve your system as you go along and check the usefulness of your second brain as it relates to the other tools that you're using. At the end of the quarter, it's a great opportunity for you to think about which integrations you need to make, if you need to make new views and new databases that will improve your workflow because you've done those quarterly reviews and started to optimize your system. After you've done your quarterly planning and you know that your quarterly goals are driving towards your yearly goals, then you can get into the weekly planning. On the week, you wanna be setting your weekly goals and then checking out if your daily goals are aligning with those weekly goals. In here is a simple view that you can tick these off and they'll disappear once you've completed them. If you don't like using Notion as your task manager, then you can also create an embed or a quick link into your preferred task manager. I prefer to use things like Motion or simple to-do lists like Todoist. The other two things to point out in the new dashboard is the new quarterly planning template. So in your new quarter, you can click new quarter and this will open up a basic template for you to set the goals and it will also filter the projects based on the quarter that they're related to. Now that we think about our notes in time, it's much easier to think about where we'll put our notes and links and resources as we're doing the work. Often that's just at the top of the quarter or actually inside the project that you're working on. That leads me to the next key feature is that I've left some free templates in here for new blog posts, podcasts and interviews and new videos that you might be creating. You can go inside and edit the templates just so that you have them personalized to your workflows and any frameworks that you like to use as you're creating content. If you have other projects that you frequently come to, create your projects in here and you can spin them up quickly. Thinking like that leads me to the resources. Your templates are resources and should be stored in the resource section. That's not had many major changes to it. The resources is basically just a list and some basic tagging system. The objective of your resources area is you can start to collect intermediate packets. So after you've completed projects, or if, you, or if you find a template or a process online, you can create an intermediary packet. You can create an intermediate packet in your resources section and then start linking them together to create your projects faster. Examples of intermediate packets might be tweet storms, blog posts, mockups, sketches, slide deck templates that you've used before. Just keep them here and make sure that you use the backlinks in your projects like this. 
Let's say I've created some resources over time and I'm gonna create a new website for this client. I can start the project by saying double square brackets and that opens up the backlinking search bar. I can then type in the name of the resource that I wanna use in this project. Let's say it's the layout template and maybe there might be three or four other resources but I can quickly get to them and I can start each project not from a blank slate but instead with loads of resources that are gonna give me that creative fire to start. For any quick notes that you're taking or ideas that just come to your head and say you have your mobile phone in your hand, open up the notes section, create a new page and just start typing in there. This is really just a sketch place for all the ideas that you have pre-project or post-project, or maybe you're on a call and you really wanna take some quick notes while you're speaking to your friend on Zoom. This is the page to do it. Jumping around a little bit, the Aries database has been slimmed down a little bit. Inside here, I've still created the filters for business and personal. And inside business, there are four key areas, but there may be more to your business. These are just for the common ones that I find in businesses that I support, which are marketing, operations, product, and sales. Inside each, you could create a team space or a dashboard that that team can collaborate in. The final feature is this basic scored ranking system that I've added to the projects database. Another huge problem that many creators face is prioritizing the different projects that you have. The simplest method that I found for prioritizing projects comes from creating some set of criteria, some rubric for what's important about the project. You then give each of those metrics a different score from zero to five, and then multiply that number together to get a score at the end. If you then sort your database by the highest score to the lowest score, you can see which projects are a priority and which ones are not at a glance. Obviously this type of thinking doesn't affect all of your projects. Say you're gonna plan a trip to your favorite place in the world. You probably don't wanna think like this. The framework that I've included here is called the RICE framework, which stands for reach, impact, confidence, and ease. You can rank each project against each of these different metrics and then prioritize based off of that. But you could quite likely just change this for whatever metrics are very important for you. Say it's, this improves my creativity or this helps me feel like I'm with my friends and having a good time. Whatever those metrics are, change them for yourself and then try rank scoring out as a method for prioritizing your projects. Once you've downloaded the template, I highly recommend just spending 10 to 20 minutes customizing all the templates to your needs and the ways that you do work. In the age of manual linking and until we have AI that is automatically organizing all of our notes, linking them together, this is the best system that I've found for managing all your notes and that flood of information that's coming at you from all of your collaborators, all your coworkers, the internet and all the cool articles that you're reading. Right now, dumping key links into the top of the quarter or into the project that it's relevant to and then organizing them as you go is by far the most easy way of keeping your notes relevant and driving towards the goal of your projects. Thanks for watching guys. And if you wanna receive more content like this, like and subscribe to be notified of when I release more content related to Second Brain, Notion, tools for thought and how to learn more effectively in a world full of information.